in the name of the father under the son under the holy spirit amen good morning to every one of you i greet you all in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ once again the lord has enabled us to gather in our different homes to worship the almighty god and give all glory to him through this divine service may the lord be with you and bless you thank you for joining us in this worship time let's begin this worship time with a word of prayer let's pray loving god we thank you for this blessed day along with the psalmist we too say this is the day that the lord has made we thank you for enabling us to gather in different homes to worship you and glorify your holy name o oh lord bless each and every one of us help us to glorify your holy name through our singing through our prayers and through our meditation let this divine service be a blessed one for each and every one of us thank you for all the blessings that you have showered upon us particularly we thank you for your protection in this time of pandemic continue to be with us and lead us in jesus name we pray amen let us glorify the lord by singing the opening hymn Dearly beloved, today we observe the twenty-third Sunday after Trinity. Let us offer the collect for the Sunday. O oh God, our refuge and strength, who art the author of all godliness, 
be ready we beseech thee to hear the devout prayers of thy church and grant that those things which we ask faithfully we may obtain effectually through jesus christ our lord amen let us continue to spend some time in prayer gracious heavenly father and loving god we worship you because you are abundant in love we worship you because you are abundant in mercy we worship you because you are abundant in grace we worship you because you are abundant in goodness we worship you because you are abundant in forgiveness we thank you for sending your son jesus christ to die on the cross in order to give us this abundant life almighty god we thank you for your promise that you would pour water on whoever is thirsty thank you for the holy spirit you have poured on us abundantly through jesus christ having received this rain on the dry ground of our heart help us o oh lord to produce fruit for your glory help us lord to concentrate on cultivating the fruits of the spirit in our life by increasing in love maintaining joy working for peace maturing in patience being liberal in kindness showering goodness staying faithful exhibiting gentleness and disciplining with self control thank you lord for pouring on us your word like the rain and dew of heaven thank you for the bible we confess with the psalmist i have seen the consummation of all perfection but your commandment is exceedingly broad o oh lord thank you for strengthening us upholding us and enabling us to lead a good christian life we thank you for the blessed family that we have received in our life we thank you for our parents brothers and sisters and all our relatives good friends and good institutions through which we receive your wisdom and your health lord continue to be with us and lead us in jesus name we pray amen now we shall hear the epistle portion for this day the epistle for the 23rd sunday after trinity is taken from paul's letter to the philippians chapter 3 reading from verse 17 philippians chapter 3 reading from the 17th verse brethren be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example for many walls of whom i have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of christ which end his destruction whose god is their belly and his glory is in their shame who mind earthly things for our citizenship is in heaven from whence also we look for the savior the lord jesus christ who shall change the body of our low estate that it may be like unto his glorious body according to the working thereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself here ends the reading of the epistle the gospel according to st matthew chapter 22 
verses beginning from 15 to 22. Matthew chapter 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle him in his words. And they sent the disciples to him along with Herodians saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully and you do not care about anyone's opinion for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, has said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Therefore, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him and went away. Here ends the gospel portion. Praise be unto you, O Christ. Once again, let us glorify the Lord by singing Nada Hem. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Dearly beloved, once again I thank you for joining us in this worship time. May the Lord be with us and bless this day's meditation too. I would like to share a few thoughts from the gospel portion that was read to us today. 
it's a beautiful passage many people know this even by heart it is a very interesting event when jesus was questioned but he came out as a victorious orator or a teacher <clears throat> you would have heard this phrase cut between the two horns of dilemma horns of dilemma what is that <clears throat> there'll be two options we always face options in this world as we live we have to choose one or the other things and there are different uh, kinds of situations like uh, you can choose the uh, important one and less important one and sometimes you have to choose between what is good and bad and sometimes you are puzzled how to choose if it is good or bad it's easy but if it is two you have some problem now if the two choices are totally bad what are you going to do what to choose even if you choose this one or that one you will get into problem no recently children i would have uh, observed halloween day the famous phrase is trick or treat in both ways you have to lose something okay in that same way there are many options in this world with which could be said both are harmful both are harmful let me give you few uh, classical examples <clears throat> socrates had a friend who strongly believed in fate vidhi fate and he said everything happens according to our fate it's determined or predetermined that it should happen in your life it will happen in your life now there used to be a, a college uh, slogan no it's a it's a crude crude english but translated from tamil what what when when happen that that then then happen a happen no it's a very very crude translation of uh, a tamil proverb edu edu eppo nadakumo adu adu appo appo nadakum this is fate but we christian don't believe in fate everything we leave it to god and he gives us the best now what's the difference fate is something determined but god chooses his will for us time and again now here uh, socrates wanted to teach him a lesson he was searching for an opportunity that opportunity came to him and that friend fell ill so socrates went to his house and inquired about him his health and found lot of medicines on a small table socrates rose went and took all the medicines and threw them away to the window <clears throat> and that friend was shocked and he was shouted at socrates what are you doing that's my medicine and socrates simply said be calm you believe in fate don't you he said yes yes as i strongly believe in fate see if it is according to the faith that you should be cured you don't need that medicine even without the medicine you will be cured because according to your faith you should be cured okay suppose according to faith you have to die even if you take medicine you will die then why do you need medicine that's why i threw it off that friend didn't know what to do see that's the kind of dilemma that the people posed before jesus christ in what way you can tell me uh, through the passage 
I'll tell you, <clears throat> two peoples came and there were two coins, two options. And Jesus gave an interpretation, gave a statement which could be interpreted in two ways. So remember these twos. First, why this dilemma? They wanted to catch Jesus Christ in his words. He wanted him to make a mistake in his words. That was, a, that was their intention, but it's a waste of time. Because you cannot make Jesus to commit mistake. Now, but they tried it. They tried it. Now, in what way? You know the question whether to pay tax to the Caesar or not is their question. Now, in what way that question became a dilemma for Jesus Christ? Now, look at those two groups. On the one side, they were Pharisees. They were the common people who strongly believed in the law of Moses and they said we should follow the law of Moses implicitly down to details. So they were very, very concerned that they are chosen people and they should be giving taxes to a Gentile, a non-Jew. I'm a Jew. I'm chosen by God. Abraham is our forefather. Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So we are special. Why should we give tax to the Gentile, non-Jewish people? So they were very critical about paying tax to Caesar. They said, we shouldn't. On the other hand, there was another group. They were just watching Jesus, what he would say. They were, as we read in the passage, called Herodians. Simply means the people who are related or close to King Herod. And that person, he was very close to the Romans, the Caesar, and he was paying tribute to him. So he wanted people to give tax because so that he could give money to Caesar and be in good terms with Caesar. So for him, not paying tax is an offense. Okay, it's an offense. But for the Pharisees, paying tax is an offense. Here is a group who says you should pay tax and the other group, we should not pay tax. So they ask the question, <clears throat> should we pay tax to Caesar? Suppose Jesus says, oh, you can pay supporting Herodians. Then they will say, see, to the people, see, this Jesus Christ is against our own people. So don't accept him as a good leader. Suppose Jesus said, no, no, in order to support them. No, no, you don't have to pay tax. They will report it, report it to the Roman uh, counselor or procurator and say, Jesus Christ is anti-national. So this is the dilemma in which Jesus Christ was placed. Now how he handled it, he handled it in a beautiful way, in a beautiful way. But we learn many lessons. The first lesson. In those days, there were two types of coins. Commercial coin and temple coin. Commercial coins were minted by the Caesar in Rome or somewhere else and was circulated among his whole empire. That should be used in the marketplace and that should be used to pay the tax. So this coin is minted by Caesar. So he had his image over there and his name was engraved on each coin. Now they had temple coins in Jewish community. They said, you should not put that coin in the offertory box. So exchange it with our temple coin and bring the temple coin and put it as an offering. 
So there were two coins in circulation. Now when Jesus asked for a coin, fortunately they gave the coin that used to be paid uh, to pay taxes. So they brought the coin uh, minted by Caesar, circulated among the whole empire which had his image and his name. When Jesus showed the coin, okay, what image you see? They said Caesar's. Whose name is there? Caesar's. Okay, then he said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. He gave, just give it back to him. Whose image is there? Okay, his image, give it back to him. But at the same time he said, there is another coin. There's another coin which has the image and the name of someone that is God himself. Now give that coin to God because that coin has the image of God and God's name is inscribed. Now what is this coin? This is the first level of understanding about the coin or the reply of Jesus Christ. He said, whose image, who or which has the image of God? As we read in Genesis chapter 2 verse 27, God created human beings in his own image. In his own image. So, who has the image of God? We. All people. All people. It's not just the Christians. Okay. We grow in the image of Jesus Christ. We grow in the image of God. But how about others? Yes. Everyone who is born in this world. Every human being. Whether they belong to one particular religious community or the other. Or an atheist also. Everyone has the image of God. So Jesus said, give what has the image of God to God. That is, all of us have to give ourselves to God himself. Because we have the image. How about the name? As we read in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. My people who are called by my name. By my name. So dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we are named after Jesus Christ. Christians. We have the name of God. Now as I time and again tell you, name signifies the nature of God. So we have the nature of God. So we have to give ourselves to God. Now with regard to what belongs to God, I can give you two interpretations. One, there are certain things which belong to us and we have to give to God. There are certain things that belong to Him and we have to give that to God. What are those things? What belongs to God? We belong to God. So give yourself to God. You are God's child. God wants you to give yourself to Him. How far you are given yourself to Jesus Christ? Have you committed your life to Jesus Christ? Do you reflect the image of God in your life? How many times you have acted as if you are like a worldly person? If you are a Christian, you are called to reflect the image of God. Reflect the image of Jesus Christ. Only in that way, I would say, you have truly have given yourself to God if you start being like a Christian on Sunday and live like other people on other weekdays there's no use if you act like a good Christian during the worship time and when you go out of the church and behave in some other way that's not good you're not you haven't committed yourself fully to God then secondly there are certain things that belong to us but we give them to God 
our praise our glory thanksgiving they all belong to you you say your praise through your mouth your thinking so there are certain things that you have what you have to give to god do you praise god all the times Psalm says I will extol the Lord at all times praise God always even at difficult times God's name will be glorified through your personal life this is the challenge that I place before you meditate upon it think about it stay in a quiet place and reflect on your own life and ask this question have i given myself wholly to jesus christ wholly to god i have the image i have to give myself to god and there are certain things that belongs to me praise glorifying thanksgiving do i give all these things to god to god alone think about it god will enable you to lead a good christian life god bless you let's pray loving god we thank you for this blessed day thank you for enabling us to meditate upon your living word continue to be with us and uphold us help us to reflect your image help us to surrender ourselves wholly to you help us also to praise you thank you glorify your holy name so that we may lift your name on high and glorify your name all through our personal life Yes, Lord. We also remember the beautiful from promise. I will honor those who honor me. I will honor those who honor me. Help us to honor you, O oh Lord. And have the experience of you honoring us in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters on behalf of you and on behalf of St Matthias's church family I congratulate all those who are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries in this week may the lord be with you and bless you and enable you to celebrate many more happy birthdays and wedding anniversaries god bless you let's close this worship time with a word of prayer Loving God, we thank you for this blessed day. We thank you for enabling us to join this worship time. Especially at this time, we come with the people who are celebrating the birthdays and wedding anniversaries in this week. Lord, be with them, bless them, help them to count your blessing and glorify your holy name all through the birthdays and wedding days, and also all through through the lives. Yes, Master. help them to celebrate many more happy birthdays and wedding anniversaries we also pray for the senior citizens in our congregation and in our families lord be with them and strengthen them above all we place the national leaders and our state leaders lord give them your wisdom your guidance help them to take the right decisions o oh lord so that your people here in this country as well as in the state may experience your welfare every day lord we also commit other nation national leaders be with them and guide them and uphold them o oh lord and especially we thank you for giving us your peace your joy your love continue to be with us and we also pray for those who are lost the loved ones 
and we also pray for those who are sick lord stretch forth your loving hands the hands that were crucified for our sake on the cross touch them strengthen them and heal them when we pray here lord we humbly ask you to touch them and strengthen them and uphold them in jesus name we pray amen let us say the lord's prayer together our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen may the grace of the lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us and with our families now and always amen let us glorify the lord by singing the closing hymn